Oh, I'm so pleased I persevered last night and just carried on cutting six at a time because I've got all of the 10mm bits cut out, which is great. So today I am sanding and drilling some of them. I need to drill a hole, three holes in this actually, but the first one is going to be 4mm, it's where the rivet, the axle for the hour display goes. So I'm needing to drill holes like this and I'd designed it with a little notch, the notch is on the base so that I could line up drill bits but I feel a jig coming on. Clamp the machine vise onto the bed of the pillar drill, put a piece of wood here with a couple of pins in, I slide that along, I tighten that and then I drill you. Fantastic and it means I can whiz through them really really quickly and I don't even have to hold it which is fantastic and it can't fly away like they usually do and that's it oh and the other thing I got done this morning was all of the 20 engravings so there's the minute dial, the two hands, minute and hour pointers what a useful use for an egg box or two uh, and then all the numbers cut out ready I thought I'd sort them at th this stage first hopefully that will pay off rather than having a huge pile of them all over the place what could it be? Ooh, lovely. The uh, hexagonal brass 35mm long male female M3 threaded spacers. Just what the doctor ordered. Well, the great thing is that with the addition of two new pins, I can now put that in and a new drill bit, slide it up there, and in. Drill one of the 3.3mm holes that I'm going to tap. There you go. All the necessary holes. Now I'm going to glue this bit on and then tap, tap, tap. Alright, I've got all them drilled. I wonder if someone knows how to use one of these. I ordered this ages ago. It theoretically, I'll zoom in a bit, it drills and it taps at the same time. Problem is, I, I just can't use it whenever I've tried on the pillar drill because if you think about it you've got to get that going in at exactly the right speed and with all the paraphernalia and springs and everything else on a pillar drill trying to pull it up and all the rest of it it's impossible and if you get it slightly wrong then obviously you don't get any threads cut because it just reams out the inside of the hole so if anyone does know how you can use one of these on a pillar drill I'd love to hear because then it just speeds up the whole process it removes another whole step Never a dull moment. Whilst the glue is drying, because I've glued these bits on, I can get this part of the kit together, because I've got all the engravings done and sorted. So that's nice. Sit here, watch me film, and put 20 of these together. And there we have the 17 parts. We've got the 1 to 12 numbers, digits, the minute and hour pointers, the main clock face for minutes, the ribbon, and the beautiful deep red glinty jewel that goes on the front of the clock face. Gives it a little bit of colour. I can't tell you how exciting this is. Because there, there's the tap, that's the sort of tap that I've used previously to this. Drill the hole, a bit smaller than the thread size, and then it's an M4 tap to cut the thread. And you have to go in, back, in, back, clearing the swarf as you go. I suddenly thought, having talked about this one part drill and tap, whether that would help because the problem is when you tap a hole especially in something soft like plastic it's very easy to get it slightly not pen perpendicular and the plastic is very forgiving and then you just end up with it ruined whereas using this because I've now drilled the holes um, this little first part lines up perfectly I will stop talking and show you what I mean I'll dip it in isopropyl alcohol as a lubricant do that. Where are we? Here we are. Then clear the swall for the first time because the flutes don't go very far. Dip it in again and
cut is brilliant and because I've compared cutting the thread in both ways it just cuts beautifully that's fantastic best thing though being that I know it's going to be perpendicular it's going to be in line with the hole that is brilliant so I have finally found a use for this one this drill and tap in one tool still in lockdown and the children have online learning and today they were learning in science about acoustics frequency and amplitude and I couldn't believe how some third-party lesson provider could make it so utterly boring. Surely someone somewhere must be able to get access to an oscilloscope and an oscillator. If not, well, in the end, to try and illustrate the point, I uh, got mine out. So there's the lovely old oscilloscope. I think the shutter speed's slightly odd. But just the fact there's the waveform frequency this way. Unfortunately, this is so old now that I think the trigger doesn't quite work. You can tweak it a bit and sometimes it'll sort of do something. But yeah, in the old days it used to just manage to lock on and freeze them. Anyway, it's beside the point. And then you can adjust with this that I rescued from a tip somewhere. Frequency this side. Amplitude that side. Let's change the frequency. And having the amplifier on top, you can hear it. I mean, how much more interesting is that? Oh, look, the frequency, the wavelength's getting longer. Now it's getting shorter. And if I turn this up to up to ten thousand, uh, ten, yeah, ten kilohertz. I mean, it's just fascinating. It's really interesting seeing that. Let's change the amplitude. Ooh, big amplitude. Less amplitude. That's, would that have been so difficult to do? I mean, I used to be so passionate about teaching... Oh, there it goes. So passionate about teaching design technology. I would have not loved something like this lockdown, but taken the opportunities, taken the bull by the horns and come up with all sorts of exciting ways of getting kids who are stuck at home interested. Very strange. Anyway, I've said too much. Let's get on with making stuff. Anyway, it worked really well and my children now have a far better understanding of frequency and amplitude and what it sounds like and how a drawing like that relates to um, the sound that you hear. Oh, and there's also, of course, with this, there's triangular waves and square waves. So again, that's just interesting for them to see. I just... Oh. Anyway, enough. Repurposing, you say? Well, now you mention it, I need to drill a 3.3mm hole down for the end of the sprawling, as we'll call it from now on. New panel pin, simple as that. So you put that along there, press it flat because I had the common sense idea, because I knew I'd have to drill this down perpendicular to have a flat there. So, sit that there, tighten that, and I've also set up the depth stop to the right depth. And then all I need to do now, which used to take ages to line up, tighten it, and also end up with regularly damaged digits, Go down like that, and then again, and that's it, like that, excellent. And I've managed to drill out 20 of these in about two or three minutes. If you want to drill a hole very accurately through something like this, all you need to do is to get the laser cutter to cut a small pilot hole, slightly under four millimetres, because that's the size I need, then you can stick on these blanks that have no holes in them and get them roughly lined up in the middle, just roughly, glue them on with super glue obviously, and then you use, you've got a centre which will guide the drill bit through really accurately. Then all you need to do, and I hasten to add that you do have to hold it very firmly, otherwise the drill bit tends to snatch it up. Let's give it a go. 
I've got my hand in the way. That's it. Arg! So the next day, when I had to stop doing this in absolute disgust at myself because I've been witted on, oh yes, hold it down really firmly and then it's the centre and all this. Inevitably, number three snatched up as the drill went through and then spins round and you end up with a far from round hole. It's almost more like a slot, so that's useless. How ridiculous. So I've had to cut out another one, which is fine, not too bad. Luckily I had a middle bit left over, so I'll get this put together. Also, for some reason, seem to have started collecting cardboard boxes and some more delivery of some more boxes. Ridiculous. So I'm having to leap over this like a gazelle, keeping my beach body ready, ready. Ridiculous. Oh. I'll use this ruined one as a pattern, but I was thinking about this last night, like you do when you're lying awake worrying about how to centre holes in bits of plastic. I think, because it has to be moving free this way, I'm going to get some sort of, either have just a wooden thing over the top with a big hole in the middle so this can slide in underneath, move around, but it will never allow it to suddenly jump up, which is always the problem. I think that's the way to go. I really must tidy up. This is absolutely ridiculous. I have to climb over things. Problem is, although it's not a problem, this very morrow I sold the last of the Nepnet Throbwell kitchen timer kits. So, whilst putting together these 20 new chronograph kits, I also need to start making and ordering all the parts to make another 20 Nepnet Throbwells. Another new jig, in the blink of an eye. Two layers of ply with spacers made of a piece of 10mm acrylic like that and 3mm acrylic like that and one sheet of paper, you know, weather thin paper and then that means this will slot in here. This is all clamped down, nice big hole there so I can line it up. Let's... Yes, a little bit of a kick but nothing much. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Another problem solved with a beautiful jig. Hmm, I'll go and do the others. Then, of course, there's a bit of the old uh, quality control. I have to say, I think this is one of my favourite jigs. Because it's turned... Well, you can see how much time and effort has gone into this bit. And it can all be ruined with a sudden judder. A jerk, if you like. And this jig stops all of that. It is brilliant. It takes away all the doubt. The first 20, which all work beautifully and aren't ruined, other than that first one which I disposed of, I am absolutely thrilled. The sign of a good jig, turning a really quite unpleasant and arduous job into an absolute joy. Hey, thank you. Finally, just watching Bohemian Rhapsody, well, listening to it, I've managed to remember that I had an old amplifier up in the loft from years ago. One of those old hi-fi systems. I don't even know whether they still make them. So that's sitting up there being used as an amplifier connected to the optical stupid television that just outputs an optical link. Why not just have two funno things? Anyway, I can now listen to stuff while I'm making things, which is great. Talking of making things and jigs that don't work, I what I'm doing is the top and bottom of the pendulum because the laser cut. Hang on, let's show you a laser cut one. One of the originals. I remember if I if you remember I changed it so it just had an engraved guidance hole. Now I thought that this would work perfectly. It used to, but. Now there's a small hole in the middle and a 12mm drill bit just wanders all over the place. So, it's got a long story long. Here are all the rejects. How delightful. Now you can see by reject, let me zoom in a bit. Despite having a pilot hole, that is not in the centre. Might look like it, but it isn't. Well, I'm not happy enough. Let's find a more... Oh, here's a good one. Here's a juicy one. Look at that, it's awful. It's nowhere near the middle. So, live and learn. 
positive, positive, positive. Um, I need to come up with a, another way of doing this. Right, so I clamp, make sure that's flat, clamp that, switch that on, pull that down. And then, it releases it far more easily and you can see that that is now properly centered so I'm very pleased about that it's a bit of a pain but I've got a new jig and to be honest with you this is so much quicker to get these in and out of look at this there comes a time etc etc when I just got sick of having to climb over stuff to get around the workshop so for the first time in I think two or three years since I had to clean it every year to fit a bouncy castle in it for my children's birthday until I really just couldn't waste that anymore um, I'm tidying amazing so far it looks even worse I suspect because I've got to the stage a bit like one of those puzzles where you've got one empty square and you've got to move everything around but you can see this like you can almost see the carpet here and I've reorganized structured if you like that bit so I've got all the storage and all the packaging and stuff in place, which is fabulous. I've even taken the mammoth step of compressing my huge collection of leads. Massive collection, absolutely ridiculous. So I've cleared several of these drawers. Would you believe it? There are things pertaining to steam head in here. Brilliant, look, even the gauges each have their own tray. And all the ready-made, um, what do you call it, gauge bases and cabochons and jigs. Look, I've got two grey jaw, grey jaws, grey drawers of jigs. Fantastic. Not one drawer where they'll fall out all over the floor and I can't shut it. Fantastic. Things are really moving on a foot. Now, this morning's first job is I've got this gravograph engraving machine here, which I have I used to use before I got a laser cutter. I don't want to get rid of it. Um, it's got so many different uses around the home. I am not happy with it sitting there, and it's been it's just slowly moving around the workshop over the last couple of years. So I've remembered that under the workbench, well behind the workbench, and below these drawers, which is under the telly, there's a space. And here's a great makeover from Steamhead. We've had these three cutting mats floating around for years. By the way, this one's crumpled and bent. I recommend not putting a really hot plate of dinner fresh from a microwave on it about 30 years ago. But anyway, finally, having had these bending, sitting around, getting trodden on, look at that. That's amazing. I was motivated to do this having a few years back finally got around to putting two screws and washers on the wall which is brilliant whenever I use this guillotine it's such a joy hanging it back up. It really is. I really do. Oh, look, There's an apt picture. Excellent. I finally after heaven only knows how many years got to the back of that. This racking system, storage system, is absolutely brilliant. Because you can get, well, you buy these frames, or you find them in skips, depending on your preference. And then you have runners that just slot in to these slots, funnily enough. And you can arrange them wherever you want. And the company sell different colours and different thicknesses or depths of draw, which oh, is just so exciting ordering all this stuff. And then you slide them in and arrange them. They even sell um, plan chest drawers, but they are prohibitively expensive, so I've only ever got six, got six of them. Right, that's exciting. I can actually see the concrete floor now, beneath the carpet of invisibility. Now, I just have to clear it's my tile cutter. I don't think I've used that in about ten years, so it shows you how long... It's been, I've got to clear a space now so I can get that huge behemoth of an engraving machine from there over to here. It's got space for a load of electronic kits, component kit things that someone was chucking out. And the engraving machine, it fits perfectly. You can see why it's been so tricky to find somewhere to put 
because it's one huge, very high quality casting. So you can't actually detach any of this. It's one massive heavy duty casting because it's a German machine and it's extremely well made. Brilliant. It doesn't matter down there because it's just going to be under the back of the table. I'm so pleased about that. Two things have happened. One, amazingly, I persevered and look, there's carpet. Carpet I didn't even know I had. There's still a little section here, suctionette, which I still haven't quite addressed yet, but, and a little bit there, but look, carpet, it's amazing, and tidiness. I spent two days doing this and I'm very pleased because it's, you know, really coming together and I can now walk around without leaping about like a gazelle. Great. The other thing that happened is the clock movements arrived, as did the coffee, and they don't fit. I don't know why I didn't check more carefully. I must have had reasons at the time or something. But these clock movements have got a longer spindle and these two bits, the hour and minute hand shafts, are slightly different sizes to the original ones that I had seven of. What a joy! Oh, how we laughed. So what I did, because obviously I don't want all these bits cut out for the next 20 kits, or the first proper 20 kits, I didn't want to risk bunging these in and find it didn't fit. And I'm very, very pleased because other than having to make an extra spacer to go in there, which is fine because I can glue that to the front of the clock movement, everything else fits. The clock movement fits perfectly, which is great. Um, so what I've had to do, and what I'm currently doing, I had to make some more of the escapement um, gears that go on the top of the pendulum because they were knocking into the wooden spaces or supports and make a load more of these having experimented with a few of these I mean the only way to do it you can try and calculate it and everything but until you actually cut something out on the laser cut and find the eel that fits changing it by sort of 0.1 millimeters diameter each time uh, it doesn't really, it's not very reliable, so I've got that sorted out, so these all new now do fit. There's the engraved bit, so you turn it over, you put it like that. Oh, look at that. Very satisfying. Mmm, pushing gears onto shafts, I'm not going to risk breaking it. Right, so that's done. Then, most peculiarly of all, I thought I'd just check the height. Here's one of these that I prepared earlier. Here's one of these that I prepared earlier, the hour display thing. That sits on there. Now, perhaps one of you who's far more intelligent than me can try and explain this, because I have not got a clue. It doesn't fit. It actually just a millimetre gap here. Whereas, and this is the mystery part, the one of these that I built using absolutely identical parts other than the clock movement that doesn't have any bearing on this, doing exactly the same thing with these exact same spaces, everything identical, this came up halfway. Now that's a three millimetre difference. So I thought, oh well, perhaps I forgot to stick one of these spaces. No, everything is identical. I spent hours, well, minutes, poring over previous videos trying to figure out what, where the difference is. And there isn't one. I just do not understand. If it was a millimetre, half a millimetre, something like that, well, OK, fair enough. You know, give and take a little bit. But this doesn't make any sense at all. Really doesn't. Three millimetres is a big amount of space. So I don't know why that's happened. I'm very, very glad I did check, though. It doesn't make any sense to me at all, but what I'm going to do, the rivets are long enough to pass through here and into there with a 3mm spacer. So what I'm going to do, because obviously once you've made the instructions up, you can't go adding extra bits willy-nilly. And as I've had my fill of making instructions for the next decade or so, I'm going to cut out some spacers, stick them onto the back of here, 3mm, and then just drill that through. That's the best way to solve the problem, and the rivet, as I say, is still long enough to go through and be fixed in place with that screw. That solves that problem. As I say, it just defies belief. It is so bizarre, and I'm absolutely thrilled that I did have the foresight 
to actually assemble one of these just quickly to see whether they fitted because that would have been awful. 20 kits sent out with this being unable to be lined up. Ridiculous. So, interesting stuff, if not incredibly frustrating. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you found it interesting. Hope to see you next time. And remember, as the young people say, there's lots of merch available at my website, steamhead.co.uk. Thanks again.